Uh, maybe that loss on uh, Wednesday was a bit of a wake-up call for him, and he's not messing around with his, any secondaries or anything like that. He is just going full throttle immediately. This is his Palutena. This is the character that we've seen him play and do have amazing results with. So let's see if it can do that again against Stretch. Or whether Stretch, kind of definitely the underdog in this situation, but by no means an inexperienced or uh, undervaluable play. Like, you know, not a valuable player. He's been in the scene for a long time. Forever. I can't. He's definitely been in it for longer than I have, and I'm at this point, I guess, officially an old fart. You smash four kids. <laughs> You're like Omega old fart, all yeah, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Uh, you're, you're wise sages. Yeah. Um, but regardless, oh, uh, Stretch has started off pretty well, but starting off well against a, the player like like Jen, you know, really solid. It, it might feel nice, but it's a big difference between that and a win. Some of these really good players, maybe they take a minute to figure out your play style, figure out what they need to do in order to counteract it effectively. And then once they do, it's you're like, how did I do well in the first place? And it seems that maybe there's a bit of that case here. Jen has a, oh man, 46%. Beautiful conversion. Using the platform to its best right there. Like, another Palutena might have gone for another Nair, but he realized even though up air has less raw damage, he was able to convert it into the rest of those hits better, more consistently. And so that means that already 63% has been dished out on stretch, and it seems like that number is only growing. He can't find this kill. Even a neutral air at that position on the stage is not enough. Beautiful job going way deep for that. The double jump fair is enough to take it, and that puts stretch off stage without a jump. Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. That's... <laughs> Is he... Okay, he... Once again, his jump got sniped. Uh, he needs to be careful about that. Marcini in general have a pretty good recovery, but once they lose their jump offstage, any character when they lose their jump offstage, but them in particular, uh, they can really struggle. Right. You notice the uh, sort of the diff like that the change in pacing with the juggles. That's a big part of effective juggling with a character like Lucina. You have to recognize when your opponent's going to throw out a panic option or an air dodge, and when you need to just double jump and meet them. You know, really put on the aggressive thing because they're scared to just throw out an option. And that's one of those things that Stretch is really good with. Oh, you. <laughs> That was such a cute little conversion. Didn't lead to a death. If it did, I'm pretty sure that would have been uh, some some nutty highlight stuff. But as it stands, Jen doesn't need a highlight in order to win the game. He's in a very comfortable position here. 121%. That is a dead stretch. Up smash calling out the full hop. And you could see Jen's overall comfort in the, just in the match. You know, as it started, he was like, oh, I'm kind of getting tossed around here. I'm being put in the corner. You know, damage is being put out on me pretty hard. And then once he started to figure out the neutral better, uh, I would say Stretch st did a pretty good job overall of his juggles were pretty solid, but the neutral was really what set Jen apart. The way he was able to consistently get those neutral which layers out space the Lucina. Oh, I got excited. I haven't seen a King DDD in months. People people were really excited about that character, and then I guess he did get nerfed. Regardless, there is no King DDD on stream. I don't think we're ever going to get a King DDD on stream. So instead, there are just these two characters, these two players, and there is certainly a... A lot of excitement. You could, oh, man. You could see. There, there was no actual exchange the first 15 seconds of the game. They respected what the opponent could do so well. But Jen got that first hit, and ooh. I will say, this is a, it appears to be the, 
at least on Battlefield, we're spending a lot less time in neutral. Instead, a character like this, like Jen, will get the hit and then do a bunch of damage, and then the situation will be turned around on him while he's still supposed to be in that good position. This is kind of just a part of the game, but it's notable that in game one, there was a lot less of this. There was a lot more just feeling each other out in neutral, and Battlefield being a smaller stage. Oh, ho, ho. yeah, down tilt forward air at the ledge. Beautiful recognition converting from Jen. That means that... Oh, that was really smart. Realized that the side B final hits were not going to connect, so he just stops it and maybe tries to counter uh, Jen's immediate return option. Jen does make it back to stage as a result, but that just showcases the awareness and character familiarity that uh, Stretch has with his main. Wow, beautiful. Just stand still. And then as soon as he sees the uh, option from Stretch, he just hits him. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of a slowdown from Jen in general, and it is working out in his favor. I don't know what that up smash was. Maybe that was actually a misinput, but regardless, he, I guess if he wants to go for a risky option, he has the the flexibility to do so, 157%, but he's on his, all right, now he's on his second stock, but he's still pretty comfortably in control of the game, I'd say. He has a jump, he's able to make it back to the ledge. Oh, that neutral air just barely interrupting that charged forward smash that would have absolutely been the end. No! Oh, he okay. stretches his last thing it up. He's like, okay, yeah. Just went really out of his way to die. Good recognition, dropping the shield right there. Getting hit by a half-charge shield breaker. Maybe that'd be great, but it's certainly better than having your shield completely broken. He might have even died at that percent. But the very least, taking a whole lot worse than punish. <gasps> the two-frame, and Jen was definitely not expecting it. That is a super early stop for a stretch. This actually puts him back in the running. We were fools for discounting him. Yes, Jen still overall has had the advantage throughout these games, but a big early stock like that can give a player a lot of momentum. The question is whether Jen will actually let that momentum tr act, like, transfer into a result. Oh. Definitely Stretch playing more aggressively than he was before. Wow, side B, neutral air, forward smash. This is a ton of damage, and he still has him in the corner, putting on this pressure, another neutral air, but not quite taking the stock yet. Okay, finally a little bit of stage control for Jen, and a little bit of stage control can go a long way. We've seen what he can do. Finally, we're back to neutral, though. The tech roll on that Palutena was just a little bit too long. And the back here, is that going to be enough? It is. Stretch takes game two after a beautiful comeback. He was down by so much. And there was that pivotal, that crucial two frame that managed to let him stay in the game and ultimately win it. So now, what stages would we expect to see banned? Um... Interesting. I guess just ban Lilat by default. Nobody wants to go to Lilat. And I guess Town and City as well. Uh, but Jen has counterpick advantage. Uh, Kalos. Interesting. Um, maybe he wants those side platforms. He was getting ledge trapped very consistently in that last game. And so perhaps an FD variant, but also having those Three, platforms that he two, can retreat to one, and even go. put extra pressure on a stretch of defaults there. Okay, Leia, let's see how those platforms work out for him. And now they seem to be doing quite fine. He has no jump off stage. Beautiful air dodge though. Quite risky considering the uh, the zone that Jen was occupying, but just good, just a call out, realizing that he wasn't gonna, he was gonna try and uh, punish a high recovery. And that's a jump sniped by that auto reticle. You know, Stretch must have had so much momentum going into this game three, and that's the sort of thing that can shut you up. 49% already, he has been lapped. 
This is not a good position, and he worked so hard in that last game. He's now already going to have to make another comeback like that this time around. But also, there is to two framing as Palutena. There is counter that uh, Ten can maybe try and go for a little bit more. Oh, all right. I was not expecting. Although we have seen Stretch do that, actually. Yeah, he's. He's been going deep for those pivotal edge guards, and that seems to absolutely be the right call. <laughs> wow, beautiful spacing, not getting hit by the uh, auto radical that time around, but. After so long, he tried so hard to get back to stage. And then finally gets the back to finish him off. Pretty rough position for Stretch right now. He absolutely has the potential to make this comeback. We saw him do something similar last game. <laughs> but... Oh, what a tech. Jen definitely ready for that up here. Pay attention to this. Uh, the way that... All right. Never mind. Nothing we're talking about there. That's just the 2-1 victory for Jen. Playing at the end there so well, so consistently. And that means that he is going to be moving on in the winner's bracket. Uh, I believe to the finals of his pool. How many pools do we have today? Uh, they're usually like four pools. Uh, two pools per wave.